So we promised ourselves that we would complete the basic shell of this bus before we gave ourselves a little vacation time. And what we mean by that is basically getting our ceilings in, our walls and our floors in. We got our dance floor in. So we've got the drawn out, of course, nothing is square. So the bottom two pieces where we thought we'd make rectangles and they're all quadrilaterals? Something like that? <laughs> I don't remember my geometry. High school maths. But they are not exactly right. So we've got to modify them and cut them even though they look like they're just rectangles. So we're cutting little strips of Ceratex to put along the metal beams on the back as a thermal brick. <sighs> you guys, we really need a vacation. <laughs> This seems so hard today, and it's not that hard. It's just that we're exhausted. Hey, okay, let's hope this works. Did that hold? Nope. In the garage, see if I can try to drill this. Okay, it's in. Looks horrible, but it's in. <laughs> Looks terrible. <laughs> ah, it's fine, it's in the closet. <laughs> Don't cut that line. <laughs> Come on, stay away from my door. Day one of doing that back wall eh, is a little bit rough. I figured we need a little pep talk done. <laughs> okay. Just want to say, got this. <laughs> you figured out how to rescan the bus, put windows in, put a ceiling in. This is just a little bit of the back wall. The crookedest, curviest, <laughs> non uniform quadrilateral goal there is. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky, but you know, we've done tricky before. All right. Tricky's like his second name. Don Tricky. DT. <laughs> That's what they call me back in the yard. DT. Come on, DT. Let's go get some stuff. Now, we're going to this guy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's like a floppy thing. Yeah, it's a floppy thing. We've avoided this wall because we weren't sure how to attach our wood to the top part of the wall where there was just insulation and we weren't sure what beams were behind it. So we got in there today and we were looking at these bolts that were sticking out of the insulation. Trying to see if we could just unscrew the bolts and maybe the insulation would come down and we could see what was behind it. Well, I think what we have is a thick beam. Oh. 
What is it? Water. Water? It's wet. As you squeeze the insulation, water came out of it, and we're like, what? Um, there's not water anywhere else, but we were like, oh, this was where the bathroom was in the original bus, right? There was clearly water leaks all over. The silver insulation, really good bus vibration proof <laughs> insulation. Um, it was all wet down here where the toilet and the sink were. So we took it out and we dried it out and then we put it back in because we wanted to reuse that insulation. And we didn't check this top piece. We're assuming that that had, insulation just absorbed all that water and held onto it for all this time. There may have been a ceiling leak before we painted the roof and sealed it up that had been dripping in over the years which is not uncommon after you've seen all the problems we've had with leaks from the bus. Engines right back here and the radiators are right back there. Having this transportation engine rated insulation to keep some of that sound deadened is really important. We'd rather be able to reuse it. I think we're gonna try to just see if we can take it inside and let it dry out, which means operation closet. It's gonna have to wait until it's dry. But means we get to move on to what we're excited about the most, <laughs> cleaning the bus. No. <laughs> uh, putting the floors down. I know this is going to be a controversial topic and I can already see there are going to be some comments down below saying, your floor should go last. You need to put all your cabinets and furniture in before you put your floors in. And well, we've read both arguments on both sides, and this is what we've decided to go with. One of the main reasons we want to put our floor in now is because when we put our cabinets in, we want to have toe kick cabinets. If our flooring was higher than our toe kicks, we wouldn't be able to open toe kick cabinets and therefore not be able to utilize that kick space. And the other reason is we didn't know about Ceratex ceramic fiber that we've been using as a thermal break in our ceiling and our walls. We didn't know about it when we put our floors in so we didn't put it in our floors and we want to put it in our floors so it's too late now to rip floors up and put it in between the pieces of wood so we're just going to put the Ceratex on top of the subfloors that we've made as, so it basically be kind of like an underlayment, which means we have to put down our vinyl planks next anyway. So the first thing we do is hopefully just roll out the Ceratex, make some cuts, and be done with it. So the Ceratex comes in a roll that is four foot wide. The bus is eight foot wide, so it was pretty simple just to roll it out, tuck it in nice and snug. So in the back here, there's a little hatch, which is access to the engine. So we have to make sure we don't seal that up. It needs to be accessible should we ever need work. We're gonna put a piece of flooring over the top of the hatch that already exists. So right now I'm just gonna cut out the Ceratex because that'll be a separate piece of flooring. the tricky one. You just kind of trace it out, like bend it. Yeah. Now the next thing we're going to do is pull out all of our floor planks and mix up maybe four or five batches of them so we have a nice mixture in the patterns and then we need to cut them down to stagger them. We'd done a lot of research early on to decide what flooring we would use and we chose six millimeter floating vinyl planks. The planks we chose are 100% waterproof and really, really durable. They're built for commercial use, so they can handle high traffic and are flexible and able to handle drastic changes in temperature. They have an acoustical pad on the bottom for noise reduction and are supposed to be easy to install. Each box covers 16.54 square feet. And we use 17 boxes in total for our floors, which cost us about $1,000. You store them, and when you install them, the temperature should be above, I think it was 55 degrees Fahrenheit and below 85 degrees. And the reason is these contract and expand, right? So you're trying to get them at sort of a neutral 
sort of place that they're not contracted or expanded when you install them so it's not suddenly a surprise when the temperature changes drastically and then your joints and the planks start to buckle. So we went ahead and got a couple boxes out, laid them down just as a test so we can make sure that it would span all the way across. We're not going to put them all across like that. Uh, this is just to make sure we know how many fit across and we're going to have to trim down one at the very end about half of the size of the others. The other thing that I'm really happy about is right now I have my socks on. I'm standing on the planks. I'm reaching my hand up and I got plenty of headspace. So we're going to use our good old wood lats. We're finding many uses for them. We're going to use them as a spacer because you want to make sure that your uh, planks are not right up against your wall. As I said before, they do contract and expand, so you want to make sure that they have the room to do that. They recommend you have at least 5 sixteenths of a gap between your wall and your planks. Um, so these wood lats are a quarter inch thick. We're putting two of them and putting a whole half inch up against the wall, which seems to work pretty good because our walls are, you know, it's not drywall, our walls are slightly flexible so when you're pushing your plank up against there it does kind of shift it in and it leaves a pretty good gap for us. <laughs> we can't have anything on the floor, it's really challenging, everything is in this part of uh, the bus and now I have to try and get through the camera and take my shoes off before I step on the ceratics. Luckily I'm fairly nimble. So the spacer idea is clearly for when you have really smooth walls, but uh, we actually have to take our spaces out. Our walls are not a straight line. Nothing in the bus is a straight line. Times like these, I'm really glad that we got our uh, winter workshop over here. Cause just walking back and forth, it's slippery, it's snowing, it's cold, so we can just go right. Whoa! <laughs> so we can go, let's go from the bus right in there to cut some of these planks down. So the very front here of our floor, the first step up into the living area is at an angle, so we're just using the cardboard box that the planks came in to make a template for that angle and it is snowing outside it's gonna look real pretty by the time our pools are done inside and outside <laughs> okay we got them cut let's take them in see if it works all right it's getting slick out there. Yeah, you gotta be careful on that. It doesn't rain or something tomorrow that it all disappears. We can go for a walk in the snow. So we liked our 
flooring because there's a lot of variety, just a lot of character in it. And so that also means that we have to kind of really think about what order we put the planks down in so that you mix it up and don't put all the light ones in one area and all the dark ones in one area to kind of yeah, and because the because there's some very distinct character to them, you don't want to put those too close to each other, or you'll see those patterns. We'd rather put a plain Jane in there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, James, out there. About half and half. Sure. I don't see any splinty. Any of them that have like distinct patterns on them, we're giving them pretty much names to decide which one we want next. And this one we call Splinty. He's the good old favorite. He gets to go as the like main feature. Everybody else is pretty much designed around him. Great Frosty one. the Snowman. <laughs> that would be it for today. This one we call half and half because it's <laughs> half dark and half light. We should call it half and half. <laughs> yeah. Half and half. Well, we have to call it. It's getting dark. But we got a lot done. It did. We're so close. We want to keep going, but it's getting a little dark. Looks great from standing right here. I almost don't even want to put furniture in now. <laughs> I know. Just have an open concept. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep the kitchen down in the luggage bay. Yep. We'll only cook outside so that we can have dance parties up here. There we go. That sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. See you tomorrow. Today. It's a little bit warmer. It's still like, what is it done? Like 30, 30, 34? 30, 34. So it's a little bit warmer. To some of you, that might not be that cold if you're from like Canada or Iceland or something. But for us, that's pretty damn cold. So let's finish these floors. This hatch area here is what we gotta keep so that we can actually lift it up and get in there if anybody needs to work on the engine for some reason. So we gotta measure each of our floor planks so that we can cut them, but then we wanna keep the remaining piece to put on the new hatch we're building so that it should seamlessly blend into the floor. We'll be back in a minute. So yesterday, because it was so cold, uh, I spent the entire day editing videos. And when I do that, I end up dreaming about editing. And now I'm here in the bus, and as we like working, <laughs> I will get one of the pieces of music that we use often in our editing will get stuck in my head. And so often I tell Don, like, guess what song I've got in my head? And most of the time, it's this one. isn't finished, but we got the flooring cut around it, so now we just gotta figure out how to make the second hatch 
which will have insulation and a vapor barrier, just so we can keep as much of that engine noise and exhaust from the bedroom back in. Unfortunately, we need to buy another box of planks. Here we've just got this tiny little strip where we've got to cut planks pretty much in half to run down the last side of the bus and we only have three full planks left. It looks really nice. We're really happy with it. The biggest issue we're going to face with having done our floors first is that we now have to protect them as we build so that they don't get scratched up. We may put these planks on the last step up into the bus so that it starts to lead you from the steps into the living area and sort of have a connection to it. Obviously there's lots of little finishing touches still to happen around the edges but all of that will happen in the future. We've almost completed our goal of completing the basic shell of the bus, meaning the ceiling, the walls, the floors. All we have left to do is this little strip of floor on this side of the bus and finish up that back wall over there before we get to go on vacation. And now that we've got interior shell almost finished, it started us thinking about all the things we would have done differently knowing what we know now. But we'll share that with you next time. Just so it'll go pretty close to the wall. Sorry. <laughs> How's it going there? Good. <laughs> You're getting a good booty shot. <laughs> beauty shot. A beauty shot. A beauty booty shot. <laughs>